All you, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you want Carissa to do um, the uh, recognition first, and then I'll introduce, or? Sure, whatever works. Okay. Do, do you want to go ahead, Carissa? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, so let's see. Well, welcome to the call, everyone. <laughs> ah. Okay, can everybody see? Yeah, okay. All right, so this week, let's start, we'll start out with our life changers. Um, so with two, we have Diana Farman, Caroline Rosita. I'm so sorry if I butcher your names, by the way. I'm like the worst at this, but Carolyn Rosatano, Christy Keiko or Kako, sorry. Amy Consavoy, Nicole Rodriguez, Sarah Jennings, Brittany Long, Rachel Kreider, Katina Hester, Cody Clark. And then with four, we have Katie Petrillo, Sarah Howley, Brittany Swanson, Jessica Hoyt. And then with six, we have, sorry, we have uh, Chelsea Treich. I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try that. Um, <laughs> Carla Ordonez, me with six, Salvatore Jones, and then Kyleen Spensley. Then with eight, we have Taylor Gross. Uh, with 12, we have Emmy Schneider Green. And then with Carolyn Marone, I don't even know how to say your last name. Sorry, girl. Uh, <laughs> 14. And then um, our top life changer again this, uh, this week is Natalie Balsamo. And then for top recruiters this week, we have Amy Consavoy, Consavoy with one, Sarah Jennings one, Salvatore Jones, Rachel Kreider, uh, Nicole Rodriguez, Natalie Balsamo, Molly Wasserman, Christy Keiko, Katie Lover, Diane Farman, and Brittany Long all with one. With two, we have Katie Petrillo, Jessica Hoyt, Carolyn Rosatano, Brittany Swanson. Oh, it got like messed up. Okay, I see. Brittany Swanson, they're all with two. And then with three, we have Kylene Spensley. Or with three, I'm sorry. We have Kylene Spensley, uh, Carla Ordonez, Carolyn, is it Marone? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and then with four, Taylor Gross, and then our top recruiter, Emmy Schneider Green, with six. And then our SC total is 116. And then go team. <laughs> stop share. There we go. Yay. Okay. All right. Good job, everyone. That board is looking really good. Um, I'm really excited to introduce our guest speaker for the night. Natalie started coaching just in June, so literally less than two months ago, and she has just, she came out the gate just rocking it. She works full-time and then some. She has an adorable puppy. She has a boyfriend, and she juggles it all and came out with, let's see, I think Success Club, like 12 her first month, 18 or 22 last month, and then even more we're only halfway through this month and she's a top life changer of the month. So she's clearly doing something right. And I'm really excited. She teaches me every day and I'm excited for her to drop some wisdom on us all tonight. So Nat, you can go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? My computer was being like funky and it wasn't working like 10 minutes ago. We're good. Okay. Um, like Brittany said, my name is Natalie. Um, I joined back in June. I think it was like June 22nd. Um, and just based off like the power of Instagram, which I'm like starting to realize that now, um, I had reached out to Brittany. Um, she, her boyfriend actually used to work where I work. Um, so I had known her boyfriend for a little bit and started following her randomly one day on social media and was kind of looking at her posts, kind of seeing like, I saw she was posting like fitness related stuff, but then I saw like motivating, like empowering type stuff too. So I was like starting to get really curious. Um, so I think I like commented on one of her pictures one day that I liked her dress or something. And then I was like, okay, she doesn't think I'm weird for that. So now I'm going to reach out to her. So I had messaged her, um, just kind of asking, you know, what are you doing? Um, and she said, you know, do you want to know about fitness, about the business side? And I said both, because I really didn't, you know, know what I was looking for. Um, 
And as far as me personally, like I wasn't looking for anything like full time, like, like Brittany said, I'm working full time right now, 40 to 50 hours a week. Um, I have a boyfriend, I have a puppy and he stepped on my face today. So that's why I have like a bruise on my face. But, um, um, anyways, I'm working full time. So I wasn't really looking for a way out of my job. I was more looking for something like to be passionate about. Um, I've been with the company that I'm at now for over nine years now. So a long time I'm the office manager there. So I, I manage, you know, the girls within the office and then operations from our office from, you know, outside different States. So, um, I do have high responsibility there, but there was still something missing. I didn't know what it was. And I still, I guess I'm just now figuring out that like, this is something that I'm passionate about. So at the beginning of this, I more was looking just to like join the challenge group, figure out what was going on. I was like, okay, discount coach would be cool. Like I, if I like these shakes, I can get them cheaper. So I was like, why not sign up like that to begin with? And then, you know, after my calls with Brittany, I was super inspired by her. And then, you know, the whole team in general has kind of been just crazy how, you know, all these people that you don't even know are so supportive and like so friendly and willing to like teach you. So I thought that was awesome. So the more like Brittany taught me and the more the group kind of acknowledged what I was doing, it made me want to do more, honestly. So for me, I more wanted to find more for myself and find something I was passionate about. So I thought that was awesome that, you know, a group of girls that you don't even know, or, you know, never even really met in person, um, can become so close to you and make you feel so good. So, um, with that, I guess I took a risk and it's paying off. So, um, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned so far is about stepping out of your comfort zone. I actually posted about it about it yesterday. Um, for me, like I'm an introvert, I'm not very, you know, outgoing. I've always been shy. So for me, when I first started, I was like, you know, I don't know if this will work for me because I'm like not the type of person that's going to post 12 times a day or make me, you know, I was really uncomfortable with, I guess, just like even doing the open shot post. So Brittany was like, okay, do it when you're ready. Like whenever you're ready, you can do it. So the more I was like, okay, I'm just going to take like one little step outside my comfort zone. And every time I've done that, like it's been nothing but good things. So I think the first thing, you know, was just reaching out to Brittany in general. The second thing um, starting to post, starting to invite people to groups, um, going live and like the coach sneak peek. That was like really scary for me, but really cool that I actually did it. Um, doing this call. Um, I ne never would have thought I would do this. So, um, this is awesome too. And even to be given this opportunity within two months of, you know, doing this, which is really cool. Um, so for me, I guess a few things I want to talk about, I'm going to go through just, I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people on this call have full-time jobs or part-time jobs. Maybe this is something that you guys want to do full-time. Um, I just want to touch on, you know, how I'm doing it and doing while, while working a full-time job. So um, for me, time has never really been a big issue. I mean, I know that, you know, you can put it, like, I guess joining as a coach, for me, it was more, you can put in what you want and you'll get what you put in. So for that, I could have been, okay, I'm going to be a discount coach. Like, I'll try to help three people, you know, I'll pay for my shakes and that's it. So some people, that's what you want to do. And that's, I think that's fine. But for me, I was like, I know I can do more, like as far as like the work that goes into this, it's not to me considered work. Like for me sitting at my desk and like doing accounting and doing book work, that's work. This is like, for me, something that like I'm starting to become passionate about. So I wanted to, you know, put everything I can into it, which to me isn't that much. So as far as like my day, when I wake up in the morning, I leave the house probably around 7.15, 7.30ish. Um, I have to drop my dog off at my parents' house every morning then go to work. Then I leave work at like 5.30 ish, pick up my dog, get home probably around 6.30 or 7 ish. Um, then I work out, then I eat dinner and then I can decide to either sit on the couch and relax or sit on the couch with my computer and invite people to a challenge group. So to me, it's not that much extra work. It's fun. It's exciting. And like, you know, hearing feedback now that I've done a couple challenge groups, um, it's amazing. Like even a couple of my coaches now that are on this call, like hearing them tell me that, you know, I've inspired them. And I feel like that's just so amazing to make me want to keep doing more. So I think once you as a new coach get through your first couple of challenge groups, it makes you really realize like, wow, there is more to this than just like, oh, try to get someone to buy a challenge pack or oh, drink the shakes. Like, there's a lot more to it. So I think the value comes like once you run your first group, in my opinion. Um, so with that, um, I try to send like three or four invites before I go to work in the morning, which may seem a little bit crazy. Um, but the way I look at it is if I wake someone up, like, I'm sorry, but, um, if they wake up to an uh, invite on their phone, like they're going to see that first thing in the morning it more, more likely than that, they'll probably notice that more than in the middle of their busy day anyways. 
So, you know, when I pick up my phone in the morning, I can see everything that I missed when I was sleeping. So I actually look at it. But if you get like a text message or a message throughout the middle of the day, you may miss it because there's so much going on. So I find it, I mean, beneficial for me to send three or four invites in the morning. And then at some point during the day, I'll hear back. It may not be till noon. It may not be till the next day. Um, but just inviting someone in the morning, I feel like has helped me. Um, I, I'll try to reply when I can. I get a lunch break. I can have my phone out at work. So that helps me a little bit in that sense. Um, but then I try to send three or four more invites after work. So I'm trying to send at least like four to five, four or five or six invites a day um, if I can. So with that, I'm still kind of going through my current Facebook friends. I haven't really touched into like, I'm trying to start like expanding my network a little bit and adding new people. So that's something that I can't wait to learn from you guys about. <laughs> um, but I've gotten good, obviously, like Brittany said, my stats, um, June 22nd to the end of the month, I helped six people. July, I helped 11. And right now I'm at nine and I'm hoping to maybe double that by the end of the month. So um, just these little things so far have been working for me. And as far as time out of my day, it's not that much. So I don't, as far as like recruiting for coaches, I now know that like time shouldn't be like an objection for people because you can do what you want with it. If you don't want to do a ton, that's fine. But if you want to, you can make it happen if it's something that you truly want to do. So I think that kind of goes for anything in life as well. Just if you want something bad enough, you'll do it. So um, that was something uh, that's just more or less like my day as far as like busyness on the weekends. I don't work the weekends, so it's nice because I can um, get, you know, more invites out and work on posting and work on doing the, the other things in the business that, you know, may take a little bit more time. Um, for me, I feel I do better like when I'm structured. So like for me on the weekends, if I don't like write down what I'm going to do for the day, I don't end up doing it. <laughs> so like um, throughout like the, the work week, I find it I find more successes happening for me during the work week when I'm busier than on the weekends when I have more freedom. Um, another thing that something that I actually struggle with, but something I'm trying to get better with is posting. So I know that posting is huge in this business, which is obviously how I came into this from Brittany's, Brittany's post, but um, I know it's a key component. But for me, I took a different approach at it just because I didn't want to like come out of the door swinging, like, oh my God, I'm going to completely transform the person that I am and post like a hundred percent about what I'm doing until like I felt comfortable with it. So like now I'm starting to feel comfortable. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that my posts were like light and fun and real. Um, and now that people I think are understanding what I'm doing, it's making more sense what I'm doing rather than like, I don't know, throwing all these crazy posts when I've never done something like this before. So for me, easing into it, I think has been helpful. So it doesn't look like I'm just trying to like promote myself or sell myself or sell something. For me, I feel like it's more real um, with doing it the way I have been. So I'm going to start amping up my posts a lot more. Like I'm super inspired by it you know, a lot of the people on the team and their posts and just the content in general, which is really good. So um, I'm going to start trying to post a little bit more in that sense, um, more or less trying to build up the team as far as, you know, getting coaches and getting coaches rolling. Um, so I feel like now after two like full months of, you know, recruiting challengers and doing that type of stuff, it seems to be working for me. So I feel like now with my current group, there's more success now just because I feel like I'm more confident because I feel like I'm a little more credible than I was, you know, two months ago. Um, so one thing that um, I want to say, you know, I'm not posting every day, but every single post that I do post, I'm messaging every single person that likes one of my posts. So every single person gets a message, whether it's someone that I've already messaged once before, whether it's like my mom's best friend, like whatever. Um, everyone gets a message. Maybe it's not an invite. Maybe they've already said no, but just like, you know, Brittany has showed me some of her stuff that she does where she just says, you know, thanks for giving me love on my post. Like, I appreciate it. Like I'm putting a lot of work in, whatever it may be, some sort of recognition for the posts I've done, whether it's on Instagram, well, both Instagram and Facebook. So it's, um, Instagram, I feel like reaches a little bit more people for me. So <laughs> it's kind of annoying to message people on Instagram sometimes because they don't let you say a lot. Um, so one thing that I do once I do message people on Instagram, if they have an interest in it, I immediately ask for like their phone number so I can message them. Um, I just say, you know, Instagram's funky. It doesn't let me send like enough information for you. So um, if I can get their phone numbers, it makes it easier for me. It's easier to reach back out. And then um, I don't know, that's just worked for me. So I've had a few conversations through Instagram where it just progressed to text messages and then it turns into um, them buying it a pass. So they want to be challengers. So 
I think if you can somehow get like a phone number out of them and use like Instagram as the excuse, like, Oh, sorry, I can't like fit it all on here. Do you mind if I text you? So that's helped me. Um, one thing that, you know, one of my coaches, Sarah had mentioned to me is I don't think I, um, I don't think I mentioned, or I don't think I realized this is happening to me, but in the beginning, I think like, because it does cost money to do this, I think people maybe like get all fogged up in their head and think that it's uncomfortable to ask someone to do something if they're going to tell them it costs something. Um, so with that, like, I didn't think it was making me uncomfortable at first until like my coach brought it up. I was like, wait, like, I think I completely ruined my chance for people. Like the first like 10 people I invited when I first started, because I just didn't like pitch it correctly. I don't think. Um, but as far as price, like, I don't think you should let that hold you back. Like everything in life, life costs money. So it's whether or not you add value that people are going to invest their money in you. So with that being said, like, I don't think you should feel comfortable about inviting when it comes to money. For me, like I start to get excited now when people talk about money because I'm like, how can you get all this stuff for $160? So like, I just rant about how awesome it is that you can get all this stuff for so cheap. And then they're like, oh yeah, that is a good deal. So if you, I think like, you know, the value of it. So I guess embrace the value of it. So for me, like, I really like the shakes. So I'm going to promote the shakes. And in my like little pitch that I give, I always say, you know, you know, the deal is 160 bucks, whatever I say, and shakes alone are 130 a month. So this is a steal. Like, why would you not want to do this? And if people say, you know, I don't really like shakes as meals, like, I don't really like to do that. Then I just say, no, neither do I like, I love shakes, but I like them as a snack. So like, just twist it to whatever, like they say to make it work for them, I guess. Um, so with that, as far as like price goes, like I used to say like everything, like, okay, you get, you know, a year's um, on-demand access, you get the containers, you get um, the shaker cup, the first shake, the um, challenge group, everything that comes with it. I used to say all that first and then say the price, um, but I've kind of transformed now to say the price and then list everything. So I don't know if that, it, I don't think, it, I don't know if it really matters, but like some salespeople will say like present and then the price or price then present. I think that the price first works for me because they read the price and then they read everything that comes with it. And it doesn't seem as bad in my opinion, if they just see a bunch of stuff, then they get hit with the price. So I guess that's like a personal opinion of how you want to do it. But I've seen more success with doing price first. And then I just get super pumped up about it. Like, can you believe like all this stuff is only 160 bucks? Like this is why I signed up to begin with. And now I'm coaching and now I'm doing this. So I just like t take price from being like a really negative thing to like a really positive thing. And I think that that's helped me a lot because now <laughs> there was a girl, she actually, I was going to talk about this in a second, but she had said that she, you know, oh my God, I'm so inspired by like your stuff you're posting and like, this is so awesome, but I don't think I'm ready to give a hundred percent. And I'm like, well, you don't know what a hundred percent is. So how do you know you're not ready to give it? So I didn't say that to her, but I thought that. And then I just said that, you know, you can do anything. Like it's literally 30 minute workouts from home. And then I went into everything and like she signed up within like five minutes and we talked to her. So I think it's like putting yourself, I guess, however you would want to be, I guess, sold, whatever is coming at you. So I just have realized that if you act excited and like really like over the top in your text messages and don't let price like clog that, it helps a lot because I know it is scary to like say, oh, and by the way, like you have to pay this. So I think if you make it like, wow, it's really cool. That this is only 160 bucks. I think that really like helps because you know the value so just like present the value that you got from it I guess is and I didn't know the value at first so like I couldn't I couldn't really like relate to that because I didn't know I, I joined this challenge group taking Brittany's word for it like oh this should be really cool like whatever it is and then once I actually like went through the group I was like wait this is really cool this was worth my money so I think that value with it along with like making sure that you know the price isn't that bad or isn't or as good I should say then I think that kind of helps with like the awkwardness of price. Um, I also use words like us and we and together. And like, I never say, um, I never say like, you can do this. I'm like, no, we can do this. Like I'm doing this with you. Like I might do the same workout. I might do a different one. Like I can let you know what I'm doing, whatever it is. Like, it's always like we, it's never like, this is for you type of thing. It, I never take myself out of the picture, which I think it helps too, because people have, people like to do things with other people I guess that's like one of the big things about the challenge group is that you know other people are doing it with you so it holds hold you accountable um another thing is I try to like add as much value as I can before people enroll um 
So like I said, like everything costs money, but it's like you, we all decide what we want to spend our money on. So if something seems like it's like a good deal, or let's say you go shopping and you like a $50 purse or a hundred dollar purse, like whatever value you think is going to come from it, whatever you see is more, is worth your money is what you're going to do. So, you know, asking about your goals, like finding out like what they want to get out of the program. Like I didn't do that at first. I like was just straight trying to sell something and I like lost a lot of people. I think of people in the war market because of that until like, I, I like said to Brittany, I was like, what do you say next? And she's like, what do you mean? You just tell them about the program. Like, what do you like ask them what their goals are? And I was like, okay, that's what I need to do. So I was just like not doing that at first. So I literally was just like, I don't know what to say. And so like Brittany really helped me with that. Like, and also just another tip, like use your coach as much as you can. I think like every Monday I'm like, okay, here's Monday. Here comes my annoying list of questions, but like I'm learning from it and I think it's awesome. So um, with that, I think just adding value from the beginning before you even like talk about selling anything or even like explaining your price. Like if someone reaches out to you about something, obviously you know that there's a need for them. So it makes it easier. But even people that like you just directly reach out to, I think if you um, provide value, you don't have to like, they don't know if you're super credible. They don't know much, like, especially me, like I don't really post that much yet. So, you know, looking at your, some of your guys' posts, like it's very obvious that you guys know what you're doing. Like you guys, you know, have a nice team. You guys have a lot of stuff going. But for me, it was, I was like, how do I build credibility for myself? And I think it's just like giving people value is like what I've noticed. So I don't think people really care, honestly, like how credible you are when it comes to something like this. They just want to know that, you know, someone's in it with them is what I've noticed and that you're there for them. So um, that's helped me as far as like follow-ups. I always, at first I wasn't using Asana. So I have like this notebook that I think I filled up every single page of like handwritten people and like highlighting in different colors. So thank you for the Asana training because that helped me a lot. <laughs> um, but sending like follow-ups, I, anytime anyone, I get like really excited when I send a link. So I always say, you know, shoot me a screenshot as soon as you get it and then we'll be all set to go. We can start working on your plan. So it kind of like creates like a sense of urgency for them. And like, if I don't hear back from them, I like within like two or three hours, I shoot another text and I asked if they had any issues getting the link. Sometimes my computer's really funky and it doesn't send. So like, I just like kind of lie and just say, no, no, my computer sometimes sucks. So can you double check to make sure you got it? And then maybe they forgot and then they realize, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I'll do it right now type of thing. Um, so I think that's just me being pushy, but um, I don't know. I think it's helped. I don't know. Um, something else. So about like Shakeology, if anyone like asked about the shakes, um, I'm honest with them. So I like obviously really like the shakes. So I just express how much I like them. Um, I always tell them like, you know, I'm not sure which type of shake you like, but you can always, you know, I can send you any recipes you want. Like we have tons of recipes. Like I just like amp up the recipes for the shakes because some people, you know, if, if you just mix like the green berry with water, I personally don't like it. But, like, the second that I added, like, soy milk to it and um, peanut butter and, like, banana, I was like, oh, my God, this is completely different. So I think if you amp up the shakes when they talk about – or when you talk about them, like, I always ask if people like smoothies first. And then if they say yes, like, oh, do you like replacing with a meal? If they say yes, then perfect. Okay, you add a ton of stuff and it fills your containers. I don't say it like that, but that's an approach you can take with them. Um or people that don't like shakes as meals, like, oh, awesome, me either. I just drink it after I work out. So <laughs> I feel like you can bend it towards whatever person, whatever feel you get from the person. Um, another, sorry, I just like wrote down like a bunch of bullet points of tips. <laughs> um, but another thing is don't be afraid to invite people. Um, I was afraid to at first where I wasn't really like inviting that many people. But I would have people like messaging me like, thank you for thinking of me. So like they think I'm doing like them a, a service. Like thanks for thinking of me. Like I'm not ready right now, but can you reach out to me next time? So I think like not being, not thinking you're like bothering people by sending them invites, I think. Um, if you bother some people, that's fine. They're probably just like crabby people, but um, that's fine. I don't really care if people ignore me because that's happening a lot. Um, but I also realized that not everyone has the messenger app for Facebook. So I had like three, I like sent out like 50 invites on Friday night. And this morning I had like three people message me. Oh, sorry. Like I don't get notifications. So I didn't see this till now. So 
I think don't be discouraged by like getting ignored either. Cause like, I remember telling Brittany, like this sucks, like people aren't answering me. And she's like, it's okay. Like if, and they may answer you later. So I, I just think like not getting your back up or getting nervous about that has helped me. Um, what else? Um, it's okay to be pushy sometimes. I think at first I was like, okay, you said no, never mind. Like, I'm not going to say anything else. But when people say no now, I like kind of try to objection like, oh, like, you know, what's going on? Um, you know, what are you looking for? Is there something else I can help you with? Do you have more questions about the shakes? Like, would next month be a better time? Like just trying to like keep a conversation going a little bit longer. Um, sometimes people change their minds. So I've had a couple of people like that. Um, I think another big thing is like make it like knowing that if you don't have all the answers, that's okay. Because like sometimes I still don't know the answer. And so I'll ask someone or I'll look it up or I'll pretend that I know the answer or um, I don't know. I just think that it's okay to not know everything. And I honestly don't know that much right now because I just started. Um, but I think that it's okay to not know the answers. Like even it's okay to tell people like sometimes if you don't know the answer, like, Oh, you know what? I'm not hundred percent sure. Like I'm going to look that up for you or whatever it may be. I just think it's, it's okay to like be unsure. Um, and then another thing I've noticed is like reach out to people that you wouldn't typically reach out to. And I think that's like more so for like newer coaches too, because when I first, you know, started, I just went to like my close friends from high school, my like friends from college, my mom, like her friends. And it seemed to me like those were the people that like were not interested. <laughs> so as soon as I started reaching out to people that were like out of my network and people that like I knew from, I maybe have knew from high school or knew from college, but it wasn't like in my direct group of friends. Those are the people that were like, yeah, I'm really interested. Like tell me more. So I think it's, I think advice would be reach out to like someone tonight or like three people tonight that you would not typically reach out to or someone that maybe you scroll through on your friend list and you're like, Oh no, like, I don't think this is a good one. I'd say just like do it because I got two people from doing that. So I'm going to, I need to do more of that actually. But, um, those are just like little tips I think that I have. Um, I think that obviously I still have a lot to learn, but I'm just kind of working with what's working for me. So Brittany and Carolyn have been like a really, really big help for me. Um, it's been fun. And I think that I'm learning a lot and I think it's cool to like be able to do this call and like see people that are actually learning from me now. So that's kind of like a goal of mine is to, you know, start to build a team and share my knowledge that I have so far with other people. So does anyone have any questions? Sorry, my voice is really scratchy. I'm kind of sick. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Okay, hey girl. First of all, great call. That was amazing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going into accounting. I start Thursday and I'm studying for my CPA. And I know you said that you typically will sit on a couch, watch TV and work your business. So I want to know if you were specifically doing an hour a day during the week and then on the weekends you amp it up or like how much time are you putting in like during the week? Because right now that is like my biggest concern slash worry. And on top of that, I am CPA studying too. So, um, I think as far as like time, like this might not be like the best thing to say, but like, I'm not doing like full power hours at the same time. I don't think like, like I said, like in the morning before work, I'll send a few invites. Like I'll just open my computer, copy paste, like quickly get a few things out. And then like, it's okay if you don't respond to people right away. If you are busy during the day, I've noticed, but, and then when I get home, maybe another like 30 minutes. So that's another reason I think why I haven't like fully amped up my posting yet because I am reaching out to everyone for my posts. So if I'm posting like three or four times a day, then I have that many more people to reach out to potentially. And I, I, with like working full time, I have to like set aside time for that. Cause I don't want to wait four days and then do it because I feel like that's kind of not the way to do it. So I think, I mean, maybe after work, and and that also includes like setting up stuff for my challenge group. So I try to do all of that like each week. I try to try to set up for the whole week. So obviously, I'm like active within the group, but it's easier for me on Sundays to like set up my post for the week because then it's it's one you know it's maybe like 20 minutes less I have to do during um during the day. So I think your post is that like post on Facebook or post for your group. Posts are my group. So like posts are my Facebook. That's like one of my struggles right now. So I really need to work on that. Um, so with that, I don't think I'm spending as far as posting on Facebook and like Instagram, I'm not spending that much time on it. 
but as far as like the invites and stuff like sometimes I am like even if it's like 10 o'clock at night like sometimes I'm still messaging people Mm -hmm. like I can do that from like laying in bed and still relaxing so I think if you like maybe set aside maybe like 30 minutes a day if it's something that's like doable maybe send out a few invites in the morning and then 30 minutes after work maybe go and like follow up with the people you invite invited or um I don't know work on your challenge group whatever it may be as far as like hours sitting down and doing it more or less like Friday night sometimes I'll do that and like Saturday um but I as far as like sitting down and like actual time it's not really like all at once it's more or less like responding as I can rather than like a full power hour at like one hour in the day okay cool thank you welcome I have a question okay <laughs> um it's weird i can i can't see you but um oh, so when you were talking about the the price and like being comfortable with um talking about the price to people do you think that like your mindset changed about price and that was coming through like in your inviting or was it literally just changing the wording of it to people i think that like i think both like i think like i was uncomfortable with presenting the price because like I did like I said I didn't see as much value yet in the price because it was still the beginning but now like I know the value is there and I think like changing the wording a little bit helped me too because it like portrayed it the way like I want to say it you know if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah I think like I didn't even really realize it until Sarah said it something to me my coach and said like I just feel uncomfortable asking people to sign up for something that costs money and I was like I guess that's that's very true. And so then I just kind of thought like, well, now I'm excited about telling people the price. So I don't know if I think it was just more of like a mindset shift for me. And maybe it's because now I've done two of the workout programs. So it's like, I know that back when I bought P90X like years ago, it was like 75 bucks just for the one workout or whatever it was. So like, I think that the value in the workouts alone is good, but to throw the shakes into, I think is like huge. Cool. Thanks. Something to add to that. I like what you said about that. Um, I love how when you were talking about how you're so excited and you're just kind of letting that excitement come out. Guys, like passion and excitement is your best script. Like you just being excited about something and being passionate about what you're doing and showing people that like people can tell through conversation when you're excited and when you're just like copying something from a piece of paper. So being yourself is huge and I really feel like that's a big part in why you're having so much success because you're having fun with it, you're enjoying it, you're just talking to these people like they're your best friends, like your BFFs and you're not like being weird about it, you're just talking to them which is huge. So definitely take these tips and start implementing them and use that passion and excitement when you're talking and to go off the price thing, another thing that has worked really well is comparing it to something that these people can understand so for example if you say like for less than the price of taking 10 fitness classes at the gym you get blah blah blah, blah, blah. like you're telling them all the stuff they're getting for a whole year and if these are people who have like probably 95% of the population have taken a fitness class at a gym. So people know they're expensive. And if you can kind of compare it to that, like, oh, less than the price of 10 fitness classes at a gym, you're getting a whole year. And I've had a lot of people say, wow, you know, that's true. I, I would spend a lot more if I was actually like going to the gym and paying for classes all the time. So that goes off of what you were saying about not really looking at the prices being a lot because you guys know it's valuable. Like you wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in it. So thank you for highlighting a lot of, awesome things and especially covering that topic because I think that's something that we often don't want to even talk about, but I'm really happy that you talked about that. So I just wanted to throw that in there and thank you for that. <laughs> and like one more thing that you just said about like the passionate part of it. It was funny because one of my friends, one of my good friends, she actually is like into, she like teaches fitness classes at some local gym by her house. But I was asking her, like trying to get her into the coaching thing, getting her into a group and like, randomly one day she just texted me and she's like okay I'm ready to do this like I'm ready to do it so I like texted her back all excited she was like oh my god I don't think I've ever gotten a response back from you so quickly like you're obviously so excited <laughs> and I was just like laughing I was like yeah I am aren't I and she was just like cracking up but she like saw that I was being persistent with it like I brought it up to her a few times and she was like I'm just ready to do it like she knew the price wasn't a lot she knew it was worth it but I think like 
more so than price, people are just like afraid to commit. So that's probably like a big thing too. When you're sending your invites, what are you saying? Um, I got this from Brittany, but let me see what it is. Hold on. I say, sorry. Um, I just say like, hey girl, hope you're doing well. Not sure if this is something you'd be interested in, but I'm working on setting up my next fitness accountability group and I'm looking for a fun, fun group to join me. I wanted to extend an invite. And then like Brittany also told me like if so, if it's someone that you like that like liked your post, you can kind of change it up and say like thanks for liking my post. Like do you have any fitness goals yourself or like something like that and then extend an invite. So I think that's that's like the only one that I've that I use is the one she gave to me. Sweet and to the point. <laughs> Short and to the point. <laughs> yeah. And then once they like respond, then I they just like go into like a big Thing. I can I can share it on like the Facebook group later if you guys want. And then do when you're doing your clothes, when you're telling them the price and all the fun stuff, are you using audio message? No, I'm just like I have it saved in like an Evernote, so I just type it out and then I follow up with like right after I send it, I just follow up with, you know, let me know once you get the link and send me a screenshot once you're enrolled and then we can get up get setting up your plan. I'm so excited, like I have a sample I can show you. Just so like they don't think as much about the price, they think of like what's gonna come after they buy it, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say don't change what you're doing because obviously you're killing it. But I use audio message just so they can hear how passionate I am. And it's I got, good yeah, that's me. good. And then do you just save that message and just like use that? And you can just forward it to people, but I try to make mine more specific. So if they tell me that they're looking to lose weight, my audio message is gonna be like, hey, and and to help you lose weight, we're gonna ha you're gonna have portion containers that not gonna allow you to have to count calories, et cetera, et cetera. Or if they're trying to tone, I'll throw that in there. So I try to make the closing part the most unique part to them. Okay, I like that. I might try to record. I'm just like I just feel like I'm awkward when I talk sometimes, so I just have to like find a good one to record. I guess. I usually am like, <laughs> I'll like say the punctuation marks out loud. <laughs> Like, you know, when you're doing talk to text and you're like, period, exclamation point. <laughs> like, I've done that before, like, in a voice message. Kind of. I've said LOL before a lot of times. Right? Like, LOL, exclamation point, exclamation point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, this is my voice. Just About the, like, awkward voice thing, though, I always say, like, hey, girl, I'm just sending you an audio message. I hate how my voice sounds. I know I sound like I'm 11, but I just wanted to send it anyway. And people love that, and they always, like, I just lead with my fears so I know I sound awkward so I just say it right out of the gate um and then it kind of takes the pressure off okay thanks I might that actually might work for me sure <laughs> I'm 11 that's really funny. <laughs> I sound like a dribble <laughs> any other questions we've got a lot of new coaches on here which is awesome I see you guys Flipping through, there's like 50 pages here. Any questions? Uh, I don't have a question, but in the um, in the chat, Taylor has a question. She said, "I don't know how to work this damn thing yet, but I have a question." <laughs> she said, "I sent info emails with YouTube videos of me explaining it, and it seems to work. But when you do it, do you do like Facebook group sneak peeks?" Or like, how do you fully explain it to multiple people? Okay, I see it now. Sorry, Taylor. <laughs> um, wait, after we did it again, because I didn't. It didn't make sense to me when it was being read to me. I send info emails with YouTube videos of me explaining it. it seems to work. You do it. Oh my gosh, there's like another face in your screen. Uh, <laughs> Facebook groups or sneak peeks? Um, do you mean like when you have a lot of people who are interested? I gotta find you. Hold on, I gotta. Where are you? I'm. I'll just unmute you so you can speak. Talk. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I like, really don't know how to work this thing yet. But um. Okay. <laughs> so like, what I've been doing because I've had like m like multiple people interested all like at once because my Instagrams and stuff, and I had five girls interested just today. So I sent out um I sent out the same exact email that I sent to all the other girls who signed up with me. And it like has 
like little descriptions of what each video is. And then I actually did three separate videos. Um, oh, cool. Like I first intro like said my story so they could actually see me saying it, you know, I'm really like seeing, I was like, um, like emotional about it or anything, you know, like excited. Then I did the middle one, which was talking about coaching, how they could be just for discounts or if they wanted to do what I'm doing. And then I also did a pricing video, but I also, during that video, I physically showed them everything I got and like explained basically how I'm a cheap ass, you know, like I don't really pay for anything unless I believe in it. And that's something, that's really how I got a lot of girls to sign up because they know I would never try and like talk about anything that I don't believe in or don't believe that works. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's worked for me, but I just wasn't sure if there was like a better way to do it. Like it's been working, but I was just curious what you guys do. No, I think that's awesome. Yeah, so I, I'd like to send sure. an email if you don't mind sending it to me. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Check it out. Something that I could start implementing. We see, we all learn. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Did you make your videos on YouTube or just from your phone? On YouTube. Well, I made it like off my computer and just uploaded to YouTube because I I just thought that was the easiest thing to do. And then they actually saw me personally and like really like saw. I feel like it was already a connection from the start, you know, right. even if they didn't meet me. And it, like, it's, it's really been working. I only started like two weeks ago and I already signed up four girls in one week and I'm signing one right up tonight. Ooh, so I mean, like, girl. it's been working, <laughs> yeah. but I was just curious if there was like another way that it's been working for you guys. So yeah, I think that's that really cool. I like the it. more personable, the better, honestly, girl. Yeah. I like you you did the initiative and went out and out on your own. And that's really just shows like, <laughs> you're gonna be and the leader you already are I mean you've got four coaches I think already which is amazing yeah you just disappeared oh there you are okay are they, <laughs> oh, <no>. I, <laughs> I have a question for you Taylor yeah um are these people you're finding from Instagram or people that are like commenting on your posts or just all the above um so far I haven't actually reached out to anybody that I don't know and I haven't even reached out to anybody at all yet like so far, everyone's been reaching out to me <laughs> um, because this is something that I've already kind of been doing before I even knew about this. So, like, I already was kind of posting fitness posts, and that peak mm -hmm. girls always ask me, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" Um, but if anything, like them just seeing, like, if you guys, um, I mean, here I'll write it. If you guys want to check out my new Instagram and like see how I've been posting, it's really been like um, blowing up. I, <laughs> it's only been one week, and I already have over like 150 followers just because of the, the way I started to post. I really started to change the way I post things. Okay, um, cool. That was like a big change for me, definitely, so. Yeah, and your Instagram stories are really good too. They're fun. Good. <laughs> I'll watch them after I get all my work done for, for, for free time and fun. <laughs> Happy to hear that, that's funny. Yeah. No, you're doing awesome, girls. Keep doing what you're doing. If it's working, don't change it. If it's not, if it ain't broke, no reason to change it. Yeah. That's really cool. And I'm happy that you shared that because I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Sounds good. It could help a lot of people. So thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carolyn, are you going to share it in a team page or are you? Or are you no, are you I'm going to keep it all to myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, Taylor, if you want to just um, post it in the team page, if you want to maybe. Like the email? Yeah, yeah. You could share it in the team page. You know how to do that? Yeah, I think. Yeah, because I just copy and paste it. So I'm sure I could just paste it right in and post it. Yeah, but I will really use the same thing it for every single section. girl. <laughs> if you want to do it in the file section, do you know how to do that? I could show you how to do it. Um, I might, I'll, yeah, how many do you show me? Okay. All right. I can <laughs> I'm share. really bad with technology, but I've been, I, I've been really getting good in the past like week. So yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, you're doing awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, hell yeah. Brittany. <laughs> That's funny. You're still unmuted, so we can hear you. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyone have any other questions? This is awesome. Actually, I do have a question. <laughs> um, since, like, I was just saying, I personally haven't even reached out to anybody. Like, I, like, I don't know. I know you guys said some little things about it, but, like, I don't even know how, like, to reach out to somebody from like my high school, I feel like they would look at me and be like, what the hell, why is this girl messaging me? Like, I feel like it would come off annoying. Like, do you guys ever like get worried about it coming off annoying? I feel like I was worried about that at first, but I feel like my story to start was similar to yours. Like the first, like June when I signed people up, like the six people, 
I didn't put that much effort into it. Like I think my first couple of posts, like people reached out to me and then I just worked off of that. Mm -hmm. So I know that I had to ask Brittany, like when I, even when I asked someone, I was like, what do I say next? Because I literally didn't know. So I don't, I just think if you take like the whole, like you're bothering people out of it, you'll feel more confident with it. And if people from high school, your high school don't want to respond to you or don't answer you, then whatever, you probably don't want to work with them anyways. But um, I would just say, just don't be afraid. Cause I, I was afraid at first. And like reach out to the people that you don't think that you would initially work or reach out to. Um, and that's worked for me. Cool. Thanks. I would say that too. And like just going off what I already said earlier about kind of just like saying, Hey, I know my voice is annoying or whatever. I lead with my fears with absolutely everything. So if I think I'm going to sound annoying or that they're going to be weirded out, I say in almost every single reach out or invite, like, Hey girl, I hope it's not super weird and random that I'm reaching out to you or like, mm -hmm. Hey, I know, hope this isn't like crazy awkward that I'm inviting you because I know we haven't talked in like a year. Like I am super blunt about it. And then most times people like will laugh about it and it just breaks the tension. So I just tell all my girls like lead with your fears. Cause I've never had anybody then be like, yeah, actually that is really weird and annoying. Like, Oh, I, like nobody ever says that. Yeah. But I just am very open about the fact that like, yeah, it is awkward. I haven't talked to you since high school. Like laugh about it. <laughs> Yeah, you do sound like you're 11. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, a bully. I love you. I'm kidding. Holy crap. <laughs> Literally got 13 new followers. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Follow back. Just kidding. I will. Follow back. Yeah, I would just say lead with your fears because people respect that when you do it. Cool. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh me. I think Molly has a question. She just can't unmute herself. Let me help. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I have a question for you, Taylor, because I just followed. I was one of your 13 followers just now. Oh. <laughs> um, and I was looking, and I noticed you're not using a lot of hashtags. So, like, how are you getting your followers? Because you also don't follow that many other people. So, are you? Um, I got a lot of followers from my uh, personal account. So I already kind of had, I had like over 2000 followers on that one, but, um, yeah, so I had a, like a lot of it was people from high school, people from college and family friends. And then once I started using any of those hashtags, cause I went from using not one ever mm -hmm. like, in the past five years to using like five at once maybe. And I'm getting like at least like 10 followers from that, maybe like a day, if not every like two days. So hashtags definitely have been helping me, but I just make sure to do ones that I know people would search. So that really has been helping me. When you say ones that you know people will search, do you mean like the top ones like fit, fitness, or like things that rel relate to your niche? Um, I personally like just did the ones that I know I searched like all the time. Like if I didn't know anything about fitness, like I always search fitness motivation. Like that was my, that's my one that like I always, always, always use. Um, because that's what I always looked up on Instagram. If I wanted to like see like girls in bikinis, you know, like little things. And that's one that um, I always use. I use self love a lot. Um, that's like my big whole goal of everything, you know, like that's kind of what I revolve everything around. And it really starts to pull followers from that as well, instead of just the fitness part. Cause a lot of people from high school, like sometimes they don't want to see all the fitness stuff. So that kind of pushes them away. So I kind of mix up both the mental and the physical. And that was a big change uh, with my Instagram, for sure. Did that help, Molly? Yes, it did. Good? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for now? I have a question in general. Um, I know there's a couple girls on here who have, like, a separate, like, fitness Instagram rather than, like, using their actual Instagram. Like, my Instagram's private. I don't really want to make it, like, public for everybody to see. So, is that something, like, if, um, like, if I don't want to make mine, pra like, public, should I make, should I make a new one, like, a fitness oh, one? So or, no. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Yeah, that would be works. Um, I have two. I can see both sides, and I'll I'll explain to you why. Um, I have two, right? I have a. I don't use the other one anymore, but I had a regular one. 
C Maroney seven. Don't follow me there. Cause I haven't posted there in like two years. <laughs> um, and then I have my cardio live in one that I made because I was like, I'm not really going to do this thing, but I guess it would be okay to just have one to just kind of post on. Um, eventually it got to the point where this kind of became a larger part of my life and I didn't want to just post fitness stuff all the time because my brand is not just fitness stuff. My brand is so much bigger than that. And people want to see the real person behind the brand. They don't just want to see fitness stuff all the time. Right. So, I mean, at that point I already had the second one. So I just only post on that one for the past, probably like two years. Um, and if I had just used the one I already had, I would have already started with a bunch of followers instead of starting with zero. Um, so that's one reason why, I mean, you're, you want to show people who you are as well, but if you don't want to post like all of the same stuff that you post on the other one and you do want to have a second one, I would just say like, make sure that your brand also incorporates you and not just fitness. Okay. So if you want a separate one cause you want to have like a business one, that's fine. But also yeah. don't get the idea in your head that, well, this one only can be fitness and nutrition and this one only can be my family and my kid and whatever. Cause you, people are going to relate to the person and not a plate of food and not like a, I don't know, an exercise photo or whatever. They want to actually see the other person. Some people will tell you the total opposite. They'll say, no, you want it to be like just fitness. People want to follow you just for that. But I don't know. I, I kind of can see both sides. So it really just depends on what you want to do. And if anyone else has anything they wanted to add or comment or negotiate or kind of go against what I said, that's fine too. Cause everyone has their own opinions about this and it's just good to, to just do whatever you think is best for you. So. Well, I was just going to say if the point of having a second one would be to make it public, then yes, make a second one. Unless, I mean, cause if there's a reason why you want this, the one you already have now private and there's like, it's not negotiable, you're not going to make it public, then make a second one. Therefore, when people are using hashtag, they don't see your page and then it's just, I can't see any of her photos. Like, so you're going to hurt yourself from that standpoint if people can't go to your page and see you and see who you are. Because right. I have random people message me all the time like, hey, your page looks great. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are, but they were able to randomly search me. So like, if you're going to make your primary page public, keep it. But if not, definitely make another one and have it public. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, Amber had a really good comment in the chat. I agree with what you said about if you're going to um, have one public, then if that's the deciding factor, whether or not to make one, then definitely make one because hashtags don't work if you're private. So you're just kind of posting them for no reason. Right. Um, but Amber said, yeah, she agrees that um, some do follow fitness pages for motivation, but as a mentor and a friend, I'd rather see and know a person my kids, the crazy things we do, working out, and my friends, cat, and so on are my life, and you get the entire package. So I, I, I do agree with what Amber, Amber said as well. Um, you know, you can really see more of the person that you're going to be working with. But, all right. Is that good? I think that was a really awesome call. What do you guys think? I got a lot out of that. I hope you guys did. Yeah, I feel super motivated right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't take a screenshot because we have two pages. Shit, this has never happened before. Let me hide the thing here. Maybe it'll... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My dog just was like, what was that? Um, how do I get rid of the chat? Okay, there we go. Maybe if I stretch it, I'll get everybody. Nope, I still don't get everyone. Um, Can we take two separate ones? Like, yeah, we might have to. So let me do one now and I'll post both. Just smile because I don't know who's on this one. So everyone smile. And we'll have to smile again too. Any day next time. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'll do our second page. All right. Hold on, there's a little chat bubble that's in the way. It's blocking the puppy, I need to get rid of it. There we go, <laughs> I'm like, we need the dog. Jess, your dog's gonna be in it. 
There we go. <laughs> All right, so we've got everyone in the photo. We'll post the photos on the team page. Um, I would love if everyone could comment on the photo one thing that they learned today that they're going to implement in their business. Because I don't want you to just leave and say, that was great, I'm so motivated, and then don't do anything. Wait, I actually have a question really quick. Oh, go ahead. Um, so, like, you know, you want me to send the email out to everyone? Um, do you want me to, which page? I mix up the pages. There's like two. You, oh, the, the sweat your heart like out. Team the team sweat your heart out page. So even though the girls that I sent the email to will like see that? Is that weird? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This, All right. I, this is something that I did that's working and I want to share it. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll post the, the photo and the team page. Comment below with one thing that you are going to implement in your business. Thank you. Natalie for being here on this call and leading this call and sharing so many awesome nuggets with us tonight and one more step outside of your comfort zone. So good job. Um, but yeah, if you guys, I'm going to stop recording.